74.7% uh, uh, by any standards. That's really an unacceptable uh, number. How are you en engaging with the issue of youth unemployment in the country with some analysts saying that some young people have no prospects of ever finding a job? Um, uh, good, good morning, Desiree. Um, good morning to, to your viewers as well as my fellow panelists from the other youth formations. Um, the issue of youth unemployment is really a pandemic in South Africa. The, the numbers uh, continue to escalate. Um, and that is actually why this past uh, Tuesday, on the 1st of June, when we launched Youth Month as the Progressive Youth Alliance, we said that the best way for us to launch Youth Month um, as young people is to go into the streets and really make, um, you know, heard our dissatisfaction with the plight and the state of youth in South Africa. Um, we, um, you know, took to the streets, we marched to the National Treasury, where we said um, we demand, among others, um, you know, the issue of, of jobs for young people. Uh, we demand, uh, among others, um, the issue of um, the retirement of older um, or people who ought to be retiring from the public sector in order to make space for, for young people to get into um, uh, the job market. Uh, because we really do believe that that youth unemployment is a pandemic and it's something that, that has been talked about for many years and we cannot celebrate Youth Month um, through cutting ribbons while young people continue to go hungry, young people continue to be unemployed and young people continue to, to not be you know, not have access to higher education and really bear the brunt of, of inequality in South Africa. So we are saying as young people that it is time that government takes the issue of youth unemployment as serious as it has, as it has taken um, the COVID-19 pandemic. When the pandemic came, uh, lots of money was made available. You had uh, relief packages, uh, you know, through um, various means, including uh, guarantee schemes and so on and so forth. And, and we can't, we don't really have the numbers of how that has uh, impacted the youth positively. So what we're saying as young people is, in as much as you've taken the pandemic of COVID-19 very seriously, and which is a very good thing uh, in the manner in which government has responded, but we believe that the issue of young youth unemployment is as, a, as serious as the pandemic as well. Liolo, we, uh, the SABC played an inset during the week where we showed that as a result of these numbers, uh, of the unemployment numbers, children are being forced to become breadwinners, even resorting uh, to sex work uh, just to uh, keep their families fed. How is the DA responding to this? Well, look, I think we, we obviously have a, a major problem in this country. And as you've stated, um, as well as the previous uh, um, speaker, on the issue of unemployment, um, young people in this country, uh, their profile is being unemployed. And most of them are most likely depressed um, with no opportunities and no way in which to really uplift themselves out of the poverty trench. Um, and this is because of failed interventions by government um, unable to really skill young people with the necessary skills that they require to be able to to function in this economy so young people do continue to remain at the periphery of this economy not only um without access but structurally left out and kept out and so it's indeed very painful very sad that young children um, are, are prostituting and, and, and having sex for money in order to stay alive. That is because this country has failed them. This country has failed this generation. This generation has been left behind. And we cannot continue anymore to continue in the way that we have. We cannot continue as a generation to be depressed, to, to, to think of suicide, because that is the level in which this economy has, has, has found us. Um, and so there has to be key meaningful reform in the economic agenda of this country. There has to be key uh, ideas and new innovative ideas about the sectors in which we want young people to be able to step into. We need to be able to understand that some sectors like mining are dying out in this country. What is there left for young people to be able to access this economy? Um, so we need to be thinking about the green economy, the, the blue economy. How are we creating those opportunities for young people to grow in economy? 
economies that have not necessarily been um, invested in in this country. So it is an, indeed a sad day, a sad month, a sad year for young people and for this generation. Um, and unfortunately, we have to continue to deal with the ramifications of a government that continues to loot um, the state, that continues to loot the funds of the state and in turn uh, leaves the young people and this generation behind. Ntokozi, you see uh, really unacceptable numbers of youth unemployment and also indicating that uh, uh, about 3.3 million youths in South Africa between the ages of 15 24 are not either educated or in education or in employment. Does this worry the IFP? Definitely. This is it's quite worrying because... You know, as, as the youth leaders, we, we've got a responsibility, um, you know, to advance the interests of young people. But when the scourge of unemployment increases in the, in the fashion that it is, it puts us as leaders of young people at a, a very difficult position to say that we have actually sent you to express our views and we have elected you to stand on our behalf. But, I mean, the, the numbers, as you say, are not telling what the government was saying. I think even the president uh, of the country yesterday, when he responded to the debate, he spoke very clearly about a bright future that is ahead of us. But I think for the past few years, we have been hearing the same story, but the numbers are speaking louder than what the president is actually saying. I mean, um, my colleague was just saying that we've got 7.4% um, of, of young people which are, are not in employment. Now that tells you that even if you go to the, a township, you go to uh, urban areas, you go to rural areas, you will find young people not doing anything. Now, subjectively, you are subjecting young people to poverty, you are subjecting them to drug abuse, to prostitution, and to an extent, I think you might have played this in the SAPC, there were young um, people from Shushuwe who were selling rooms in order to keep their family um, alive, in order to get food on the table. But you've got leaders of government who do not care, who are stealing the money that is supposed to relieve um, our people. So at the plight of poverty of our people, you've got a government that is not caring. But I think that eventually we must sit down as, as political leaders and as young leaders from different spaces, whether it's in, 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 in business spaces, academics, and sit around to formulate policies that would actually respond to the need of young people across, across the country. Because if we just take the responsibility to politicians and not play an active role in changing the lives of young people, it's not going to happen in this lifetime. So we need to pull together as young people and collectively say, this is what we've been elected to do. And whatever that we are doing in our small pockets in our different political parties is not addressing issues of young people. Let us sit down collectively as young people and say, this is our agenda. This is what is facing us. I mean, this month, there's very little to commemorate. I think the, the young people from 1976 would actually look at us now and say, after all the what we have done and all the sacrifices that we have done, sacrificing with our lives, but still young people remain marginalized in the government that we played a critical role in ensuring that they get into um, power and uplift young people in our country. So it's quite a painful uh, sight that we are observing as the IFPU Brigade. I'm going to ask uh, all of you to think about this question as we go to our tweets, as we asked our viewers to uh, en engage in this conversation. But I want to ask all of you, what socioeconomic considerations or ideologies uh, inform a young person in your respective political parties. But we also uh, asked our viewers a question this morning uh, that we asked them to interact on. And uh, the question is about uh, the young formations in political parties and if they're making an impact. Let's take a look at some of the tweets that have come through. Bramoro says a big no, the youth are majority unemployed. Uh, a big no, the youth uh, are unemployed. The politicians use them to win elections while leaving them unemployed. I wish all the young wings will demand for jobs for the citizens instead of following the political propaganda agenda. Um, Mar is saying, I honestly don't think so. When youth is in, in this country tries to raise their voice over something that doesn't sit well with them, they are sent police to brutalize them. Their weak point is lacking unity. Surely a number of youth is enough to reserve them seats in Parliament. Uh, Musimane Khape says uh, political youth formations 
are just useless and baseless because they benefit only the few and selected ones. Kisha, puka stupid structures. Umberto Lewis saying, Morning Desra, I'm happy to engage today. I think they do their, their presence plays a very significant role in all these parties. Oh, well, we'll find out how soon. Brent saying, no, we don't hear their voice in issues such as COVID-19 in South Africa, corruption, state capture, high unemployment, high crime rates, drug abuse, NHI, etc. They need to be visible in finding and driving solutions to these issues if they are to impact the national discourse. And with that, we're bringing back uh, the uh, political leaders that we're talking to today, young political leaders, where we're asking what socioeconomic considerations or ideologies uh, inform a young person, non uh, about in your party. Um, thank you, Des. Um, I think that first and foremost, what we've always advocated for as the ANC Youth League has been economic freedom in our lifetime. You would know that different generations of the Youth League at different stages have said that um, without economic freedom, they really, um, they, they, you, you cannot enjoy fully your political freedom without um, economic freedom. And the Youth League has always been very clear um, in, in the proposals that it has made towards the issue of, of economic freedom in our lifetime, uh, the, 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 the debate around nationalization of mines, uh, the debate around um, free education. In fact, I saw a tweet of someone saying that um, youth formations have not been able to influence the parties positively. The reason that we currently have um, the implementation, even though we are not 100% happy with, with the manner in which it's been implemented. The issue of free education and the amount, announcement that was made in 2017 um, with regards to the implementation of free education is actually a policy position that was advocated for by young people um, uh, who who, for, who form part of the youth league and other youth formations as well. And that has now actually become policy of government. Um, there are various other, the issue of scrapping of entry-level um, experience for entry-level work. Um, again, we, we as, as the fact that now become policy of government actually is indeed um, a, a policy that was advocated for by young people within the the Congress Youth Movement and the, and, the, and, and the Congress Movement as well, and that has become policies of government. The NYDA that we currently have, uh, that um, uh, Luyolo uh, is is part of the, the the colleagues that are going to be soon be appointing the board for that again is a policy. Uh, well, it, the, the, the institution was advocated for by young people to say that we need an institution that's going to primarily look at the issue. All right, we seem to be losing connection there with Nongaba and we'll continue to try. But Luyolo, just if a young person is within the Democratic Alliance, what issues are they, national issues are they pursuing? Look, I think, you know, it's very important just also reflecting on some of the tweets and, and what people are saying is that for me, I, I honestly don't care about the ideological standing of any young person. What I do care about is the issues that are facing us right now. And those are the issues of unemployment. Those are the issues um, of being able to advocate for young people in different spaces and sectors that do exist. And so the point that is being made in one of the tweets about um, youth organizations not being seen or not being relevant um, is definitely true to an extent, but we also need channels like the SABC to give that space to young people to follow the work that young people are doing. I mean, in just the past two months, the DA has spent, you know, uh, a huge amount of time visiting NYDA offices across the country, uh, trying to understand what is the issue that young people say to us that the NYDA is not assisting us, that the NYDA is not for us. And so we went to those offices to understand the issues. And, you know, we found things that were really shocking. So, so the issue is not necessarily about not enough is being done, is that on the ground, the work that is being spoken about in parliament is not translating to the ordinary young person. And so we need networks like the SABC come with us, follow us, follow the work that is being done by the IFP, uh, by uh, Honorable Ngumalo here, who's doing great work there. The DA is doing great work. But 
this conversation needs us to come together to say, what is the solutions? The solutions as the DA is simple. We want a one-stop shop for young people. We are tired of departments that cater funding, uh, internships, learnerships, all scattered across you know, government departments. Where are we going to get a centralized one-stop shop? If you want funding as a young person for your business, you know where to go. If you want a learnership and inter internship, you know where to go. If you want a bursary, you know where to go so that you start aligning the structure unemployment crisis in this country with giving young people skills and then after you go further than that you say what are the, the the economic sectors in the next 10 to 15 years that are going to grow this country that are going to make this country's gdp and its employment stats go up and you look at sectors that will be speaking to our generation the production of hemp uh, agriculture how are we intensively and deliberately getting young people in those spaces and so our job as young people in these, in these political parties, in these positions, is to be able to advocate for those things and reach uh, along the aisle to each other and say, guys, Jong, this thing of, 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 of being separated is wrong. How are we now going to listen to what is being said out there by young people who are saying, guys, your political uh, 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 inclinations are deliberately killing our agenda as young people and we need to stand together. So we can only do that, Des, by being able to have those frank conversations and we need a consolidated effort, both from the media, both from the ground, both from leaders to really work on this issue that we are, we are dealing with here in this country. Mtokozisi, what are the social, uh, uh, socioeconomic considerations or ideology uh, that an IFP youth uh, encompasses? Well, thank you, Desiree. I think um, what you grasp from this interview is that most of the youth leaders present here today are, are singing from the same hymn sheet book, and they are not in their, your, you know, your ideological space of, well, this is what my party believes in, this is what my party believes in. But we, I think we have come to a point where, as young people, we are no longer throwing mud at each other when we're having debates, but actually look at the issues that are facing our constituency and collectively agree in one uh, word to say that we need to collectively work together. Before I respond um, um, to the question at hand, uh, the, 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 from the tweets, they, there was a lot of they, they, but in my previous comment, I actually indicated that, you know, we need to come together because these people who are treating their professionals, their academics, they come from different spaces. Now, we do not have as politicians a monopoly of thought, but we need contributions from them and say, these are the matters that are affecting us. Please advocate for this in your own respective places. But the IFP has always um, respected self-help and self-reliance. Because if that, we equip young people, we equip our women in our communities, we equip um, men in our communities to be self-reliant and, and self-help, not be reliant mainly on government, on handouts, on, and, on, 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 on grants, and et cetera. Because it gives back the confidence and you know your dignity as a person to know that we've got a cooperation, a co-op as, as, as young people or as young women in a certain community, we have built something, which department do we then go to in order for us to get sponsorship and funding in order for our business to grow further. Because objectively, we have said there's seven of us in the community, we want to bake, we want to do this. Because I mean, all these big um, spaces that we speak of must start somewhere. And we need to train our young people to be in a space of business where they will make a contribution in their own communities and then expand. So I think what we have always said as the IFP is that people must find opportunities around where they live so that even now in our rural areas, we are able to create work, we are able to create employment for ourselves so that we can contribute in the respective place, places where we actually come from. And then we grow our businesses. But I want to reiterate that the IFP IFP has always been of the view that there should be a specific youth ministry, which I think uh, will link or tie to what uh, uh, Luyolo is speaking of, to say there must be a central uh, central point for young people. Because if you've got a, uni a minister of young people, whichever um, departments or, or, or entities under that department will actually tell you this is where you got internships, they will be able to tell you um, certain departments have got so many um, um, intentions for young people. Here's funding. 
here is uh, leadership, here is this, here is that, because mainly that department will have a mandate to collect all views of young people and address it in all respective places. And as young people, I think even in parliament will be able to put that person to account. You know, there's money in the in the department from um, Minister Mashamaid, but it's very little young people. It's, in fact, it's little money and it's going to, it's not going to help those who are actually in need, but it's going to help comrades of, of the ANC. So I think eventually we need to come together and say this, the scale of poverty, unemployment, and everything that is affecting all the social issues that are affecting young people are not only party-based, but they're affecting each and every one of us. We also asked our viewers to call in today, and Sabelo from Peter Maritzburg joins us now on the line. Sabona Sabelo, what's on your mind with regards to uh, Youth Month in South Africa? First of, of all, Young people of this country, one, they are angry and frustrated about all these red tapes that we find in the government uh, department and uh, in the in the in the in the space. So basically, in as much as I, I see uh, the opposition is talking about uniting young people and uh, forming one voice, but the problem is one in terms of practicality. These people from opposition, they are nowhere to be found. Young people were marching uh, a, a few days ago, as none of has spoken. Where were these people? Uh, if they are, they are serious in terms of saying, let's speak in one voice, let's address these issues in one voice. So in simple, in, in simple uh, uh, terms, I'm saying that we do have a way forward, we do have brilliant ideas and all that, but in terms of practicality, we, we, we are nowhere to be found. And also, I just want to comment on this thing of the NYTA. Uh, we, we, uh, I lost a, 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 a trust and interest in terms of our NYTA because even now, they are going to appoint a new board. But the same uh, 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 system is failing young people. And it, it has been failing young people since from the Youth Commission and so forth and all that. So in to totality... NYTA should be scrapped. Should be scrapped. It's not of good assistance to young people. Thank you. Sabelo is so eloquent in his points. I really can't add anything to that. But we also have uh, Pumlani from Pumalanga. Pumlani, a very good morning to you. Oh, good morning, Desiree. How are you and with your, with your, with your, with your uh, host? How would you like to contribute to this conversation? Um... Uh, a lot of points that have been raised by your, your 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 people on the line, and they are very very on point. Really, they talk uh, uh, more relevant issues to to us as young people. We are very frustrated as young people because we don't even know where to go when we need help as young people. You go to the left, they point you to the right. You go to the right, they point you to the left. Then it lead us to a position where we ask ourselves of where 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 are we coming from? Why are we here after twenty? Five years in democracy as South Africans, as young people, we don't know where to go. You got a business, you don't get help. You got every qualification, but you don't get help. You take your mind, you think about what is happening in Parliament as we're sitting here. Now they were pushing each other about the issues of corruption, blah, blah, blah. You don't understand what the government is doing. It tells you, it tells us that the leadership we have now, they are all confused on what to do with the nation or with the country called South Africa. We need the resolutions. We need proper direction about this, these issues in this country, more especially us as, as young people, because we are dominant in the number of unemployment. Let's, uh, let's start with you just to respond uh, to those concerns brought up. Uh, thank you very much, Des. Um, I'm sorry about earlier with the technical uh, glitch that I had. I think that first things first, young people want a hand up and not a hand out. Um, I'm a firm believer that young people actually have the solutions to many of the problems that they face. Um, and if you go to any township, you will find young people acquiring skills for themselves, by themselves. You will find young people fixing cars. You will find young people, you know, um, laying bricks. You will find young people involved in a lot of different things. And I think what we ought to be doing is we ought to be, uh, you know, some time ago we spoke about a skills revolution. What we actually ought to be doing is one focusing on how do you have a massive skills transfer in South Africa to ensure that those who do not have skills or 
or do not have, do not have skills have those skills transferred so in that how do you turn every factory um flow into a a a a, a workshop or skills transfer um particular um setting too what do you do with the existing skills that young people have how do you ensure that you have a mass accreditation of existing skills so that young people are able to actually use um the skills that they have to be able to empower themselves three what do you do with young people who do not have access to higher Young education uh, in the- can i just come in Hello? here can i just come in here and say you came on to the conversation and uh, gave praises to what is being d- developments in the nyda and sabelo uh, comes in and says no ways the nyda is useless I want to come to that point, and I want to link it to the point that Mtogo um, Zisi had, had raised earlier on, where he said that you need a one-stop shop um, in terms of um, a, a ministry for young people. But we also believe that issues of youth empowerment actually cut across. And maybe the idea of the NYDA at the time, and I think that the NYDA has done well, first and foremost, we must give we must give props where, where, where it's due. They've had clean audits. They've been able to assist young people. But the problem has been the issue of funding. The issue of funding of the NYDA, the budget of the NYDA really does not speak to the magnitude of the problem um, of youth empowerment in this country. And I think one of the problems that we've had is we've we've viewed the NYDA as the one-stop solution for the problems that young people face. But actually it's not because in each and every department that we have in government, young people are affected. When you speak about crime, we are affected by crime. When you speak about health, the Department of Health, access to, 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 to universal health coverage, when you speak about education, Education, we're affected by those things. And I think that maybe the fact that we view the NYDA as, as this one institution that's going to solve the problems of young people has actually been sort of um, the mistake that we've made. The issues of funding of that institution are very inadequate. But really what we need to be focusing on is how do we ensure that we mainstream youth empowerment to cut across not only all departments of government, but also all sectors in society. What becomes the job or the response of the private sector? One of the things that we are going to be doing in this youth month is actually going to the JSE to say, what have you guys done to ensure that there's youth empowerment in this country? Because we can't give the private sector a, a blank check. What becomes the role of civic society um, in, in ensuring that, you know, that there's youth empowerment in our communities? What becomes the role of the media um, in, in ensuring that there's youth empowerment? So I think that we need to okay. shift our mindset to Thanks, youth Mba. empowerment. I'm going to have to bring in a caller now. We have Khaoleta from Fixburg. Khaleta, what's on your mind about this conversation? Morning, Darzi. Uh, the challenges that we are having, those most of the formation of youth are not assisting youth. NYDA is one of the things that is being has supposed to be scrapped. It doesn't assist any youth in South Africa. Most of us who are suffering because of NYDA doesn't do their job. The second, the disformations of the structures of the youth are not assisting the youth. During the time where these youth are registered, which are the most beneficiary of the 300, the youth have been Even today, most of the youth have never get 300. But we still have the solution claiming themselves and say they are assisting the youth. The youth of today, they are struggling with the drugs. They are involved in drugs because they are unemployment. They cannot do anything. But we have structures that are claiming every time coming to the media that say to them they are assisting youth. The youth of South Africa are struggling, but I think it's time so that we scrap the NYDA totally and we start the new formation so that we can start anything that can assist the youth. Even if you can go to local municipality, there are youth just people who are working there, but they are not assisting youth. You can ask them, have they visited any municipality in all South African churches? What are those youth, uh, people who have been assisted, that are doing to assist our youth? And thank you. That's quite drastic, saying we must scrap them all together. Uh, Mzukisi from Cape Town. Mzukisi, what's on your mind? Yes, ma'am. Um, I'm just watching this youth, um, youth month. Yes, ma'am. How are you people there? We're good, thank you. What's on your mind this morning, Mzukisi? Yes, I just want to ask all the, the panel that is in there regarding with, with what are they saying today? Um, look, Youth have got no strategy to um, yep. to come down to to, to, to to do projects and so forth. But I'm worried that everyone is pushing their own propaganda or the agenda of the political party. What I want to know is now, what is the youth 
of South Africa mm -hmm. is listening. Okay, Mzukisi, thank you very thank much for your contribution. And that's uh, why we wanted to know your ideology because Mzukisi says you have no strategy for coming down to the youth on the ground. But from one Mzukisi, we, we now go to Mzuvu Kile, uh, a tweet uh, that we're going to use to wrap up our conversation that I think it's quite important and we're going to put it up. He says, Morning, Sisi, no, because the seniors from the mother body like to impose the people who must lead the youth wings. The reason to use them in their factional battles instead of allowing the youth to look at the issues that are facing youths of our country. And with, I will use this as a segue to ask all uh, our, our participants today about events in your political parties that are impeding pro uh, progress, non labor uh, factional battles within the African National Congress. Are these affecting the effectiveness of young people within the African National Congress? Uh, Des, you, you would know that for a very long time. It is, in fact, true that the Youth League was used by, by the elders, that we refer to them as the elders, really as a means um, to, to, to fight their own factional battles. And what we've said, and in fact, that's also what has partly led to the demise of, of the Youth League over the years, as a task team, when we came into office, um, which is about a month or two ago, we said that the one thing that we will not allow is for young people to continue to be used as pocket knives in the factional battles of 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 of, um, of of party leaders. We've also said that we do not want to be drawn into who did what and who did what um, at at a level of of our party leadership. What we have been appointed to to do and the task that we have is to one revive the youth league in the interest of young people in South Africa, champion the interest and also rally them behind the banner of the ANC. And that is our sole mandate and and really where we've um we've 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 ensured that our efforts are yeah. are, are focused on uh we know that i mean mm -hmm. Thank you. I think we, we run out of time and we're going to have to shorten our responses. But Luyolo, the Democratic Alliance issues of uh, the party, the mother body turning away black leaders. And also during this week, we had a very bizarre press uh, uh, statement by Soli Malazi and Mahashule Ghana where we were expecting political conversations to take place. And they were talking about uh, a jog to, from Joburg to... Are these affecting young people in, in the party in terms of constructive conversations? Well, look, just on uh, Sonny Malazi and Magashule Khan, I think what they're attempting, which is um, a jog from Soweto to Zanin to raise 500,000 rand for school kids, is something that is really amazing um, and really admirable in a time like this in our country. But look, every political party has its issues. Um, every political party faces its own challenges. But what I always say is that how does that party self-correct and how that party uh, comes to terms with the issues that it faces and how it, it decides um, to handle those those particular issues. And so the, the matter of black leaders leaving the party is obviously, um, in my view, a perception that is being created. Um, whether true or not, um, I can only speak for myself as a black young person in the organization. Uh, and I'm there because I believe in what we are doing and what we are trying to build. I'm there because the DA is the only party with over 20 young people in parliament under the age of 30 trying to actually uh, fight and carve out a space for young people. And no, we will not co-sign uh, things that we do not know as young people. We will not uh, agree to things that will compromise the issues that we are there for in those particular spaces. Um, and, and that's the danger as young people. Um, and so I think in this conversation, one need to, needs to always remember that we are accountable to young people of this country. We do not have all the answers, but we want to partner and collaborate with young people of this country to be able to find solutions um, on the table and, and no longer fighting over things that don't really matter. We know the state is corrupt. We know that the politicians and the people in government are corrupt. But but what are we going to do about it? Yeah, that is before the question. We, before so we that, wrap up with Mutoko Zisi, we're just going to uh, take a call from Vuyane from Katlehong. Vuyane, very good morning to you. Quickly, what's on your mind this morning? Good morning, good morning ma'am. Uh, what is in my mind, you know, about the, the, the third party in uh, South Africans, you know, because we go to school, we study, we pop out the big money to study. At the end of the day, 
we finish the college universities, we can't get a job. That's a, that's a sad part. And whereas, like, you know, we, and we all understand that, like, uh, South Africa is corrupt and ANC failing the black people, you know what I mean? But uh, what I can, the ANC maybe can focus on, like, uh, like, because if you check, the foreigners, they wake up early in the morning, they go to work. The, the, the South Africans, they don't get a job, you know what I mean? If they can focus to the private sector, because the private sector is the main cause of this thing, of this problem, because they don't want to employ South Africans. You know what I mean? What Vianney mentions is so important because the whole point of June 1976 was the fight for quality education. Ntoko Zisi, please help us conclude this conversation. Just touch on that point we were talking about, about the role of elders in your respective political parties in either advancing or impeding the issues of young people in the parties? Well, I must say, Desiree, that in the, in the IFU, you don't have any glitches in terms of um, the older generation interfering with um, young people. I think we've been given that role um, freely to advance issues of young people. But I do want to touch on the issue that um, the last caller has just made. I think he'd be glad to know that the IFU has put on a private member's bill through Honourable Funder Meva in Parliament to say that there must be certain sectors and particular jobs of the economy that must be ring fence for South Africans. Um, just to, 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 to address the issue of having foreign nationals taking almost all of the jobs, in particularly in the microeconomy, informal economy, and um, local economy. So we've put in that um, private member's bill, hoping that it will be passed very soon so that it becomes an act, and that be, it must be monitored that it is implemented, because now you see that the, particularly young black people have been pushed out of jobs like in your waitering, your, your Uber driving, your trucking um, 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 jobs, now we have said those kind of jobs, which are not mainly skilled jobs, must yeah. be secured for South Africans. I think in a, in a way, it would be so able to see, address some of the issues. We've run out of time, facing. but would like to thank all of you. Nongleba uh, Mthlauli, the uh, convener for the ANC Youth League, and uh, Luyolo, the federal leader, Luyolo Mpiti, federal leader for the Democratic Alliance, and also uh, IFP Youth Brigade leader, Mtoko Zisi Ngumalo. As we reminded you at the beginning, we invited the Freedom Front uh, Plus uh, to this conversation who declined the invitation, and the EFF who had not responded by the time of going to air, but we've got the whole month to have these conversations. We will continue to have them and speak to other stakeholders and uh, youth political party leaders. To all of you, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having us. Thank you. As I said, Thanks. the conversation continues and uh, would like your inputs and we can still take uh, calls in this regard. But that funeral service for the liberation struggle star, what Ivy Kikizwa Gina, still underway in her hometown of Gabeja, where she will be laid to rest. Let's take it there.